We don't do that here. What the are back this is going is this going to be our final episode of the year i think it is it might be yeah uh so we're going to be doing some picks awards this is the ultimate fucking casual who would that be that would be me i'm leo joined by my good buddies here chief and nathan uh they've been schooling me up all year and we're gonna see how my end of year picks stack up to theirs and we'll see just how much of a fucking casual i really am so, but first we have some a bit of stuff to review, and that is uh, really quickly. There was a heavyweight Muay Thai fight on the eighth. I recommend checking it out. Uh, but UFC Fight Night at the Apex on December 9th. This was supposed to be in. I saw Singapore. I heard someone say it was going to be in China. Doesn't matter. This was supposed to be one of those big, like, Asian showcases. But let's go from the bottom up here. Andre Muniz gets the split decision over the Iron Turtle, Park Junyong. Tim Elliott, submission one, over one name, China person, Sumu Derji, I think. Uh, I think that's what it was, but uh, it was strange. I was expecting more. Like, if you're going to be a mononym, like, you better be able to back that up. Uh, Nasrat Hakparast, KO1 over slang for bullshit Jamie Malarkey. Nothing here? All right. Khalil let Roundtree. I'm sure you guys were chomping at the bit for that one. Yeah, let's get to the good stuff. KO3. <laughs> so that was... Uh, like we both picked him by knockout. I mean, he really is such a uh, an explosive fighter and it seems like he's entering maybe i don't know if it's a second prime he's entering some kind of prime uh for as old as he is um but he he's really just seems like he's getting better and man like if you want to talk about like a dream fight i mean him versus alex Pereira at light heavyweight i don't oh. know how realistic that is but what a fight that would be this was against uh anthony smith right he came in on mm -hmm. late notice or was that oh, was he always the guy yeah Anthony yeah, Smith came in on late notice again. All right, cool. He's a he's a bit of a company man. He's Anthony Smith. He's a, he, there was all that one we talked about last time where um, he didn't he chose not to um, take the take the belt from Joan. Yeah, yeah, and he's done some. I think this isn't the first time he's come in on late notice into the UFC. I think he saved the bacon with a few fights like pretty late on. So he's, he's definitely uh, held in high regard by Dana. Yeah, his last fight before Roundtree was also a short notice one. That one was, I think, on the Holloway card, mm -hmm. where a Korean zombie retired. But uh, Roundtree, like, yeah, his second win. I don't know that much about his career in the years before, but with him getting dynamite wins and Pereira also getting dynamite wins. I mean, it's only the, the only logical conclusion is that they're going to throw them in with each other. Even if it is yeah, just going to be Roundtree getting his ass kicked. Well, it'll depend if uh, Pereira is still the champion or even still a rounded light heavyweight for that matter and not moving up um, because he's got, looks like he's got seven guys in front of him right now, or eight guys in front of him. Yeah, I think Dan will uh, make an exception and have him skip the queue, I'd imagine. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, or maybe he throws him straight in with Yawn, and then that, like, gives him the bump he needs to justify the title fight. Yeah, that that'd be a good move for him, I think. Uh, anything more on Roundtree before we hit the main event? But I don't know, is there a lot to say on the main event? There's not a whole lot on the main event. It's a very uh, Expected. uninspired performance. Yeah. Expected, but also like not very interesting either. For a rank seven, uh, coming up against number fourteen, you'd think that there would be like levels to the levels to the game, right? But that doesn't seem to be the case. Oh, yeah, I was. I think all three judges scored it like fifty forty-five. Or maybe it was one of them even wider than that? I think. I think was, one of them took a fairly one of, uh, fight. Gutierrez. Yeah. It was a pretty, I hesitate to say boring watch, but it, it was a bit snoozy. 
Oh, it was definitely boring. I won't even dance around it. It was a snoozer. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was grimy, for sure. But that is that for that one. I'm actually a bit excited to get to 296 here, so uh, I'm going to tease myself just a quick KO1 in one FC. It was another Muay Thai fight. These were the smaller guys. Also an, an entertaining one, so worth checking out. The card overall was pretty good. All right, UFC 296. Woof. Um, I'm going to start from the bottom. Dustin Jacoby. Why did I have him highlighted? And he ended up being like on a prelim, but he lost to Alonzo Menefield. Uh, Cody Garbrandt. KO1. Brian Kelleher. He's back. Cody's yep. back. <laughs> uh, somebody asked Dana about it after in the post fight press. I think somebody said that he looked like the, the Dominic Cruz Cody again I mean he's been knocked out a fair few times since then I don't think we'll ever get that form of Cody back but you know he's exciting to watch you know he's even knocked people out or he's going to get knocked out brutally so I'm all for it throw him, throw him back in the top five for me goodness yeah for sure I mean I don't have expectations on how far he could go, but I'm just here for the ride. Just as far as far as as long as it goes, I'm here for it. The candles burning at both ends for him. Yeah, yeah I mean he's I mean he he's been through a lot of wars. He's been yeah. badly knocked out several times, so it's like could be a last hurrah. It's probably not going to end well for him, but I'm not going to focus on that now. Just focus on the good <laughs> times while we have it. Yeah, he he um he he spoke about um how his dad. Are- his uncles, I think it was, they used to take him to like, um, they used to take smokers essentially. He was younger, like around 14, 15, and that he'd go and do like multiple ones per weekend. So, like, I think this is a guy that's just been in way too many gym wars before even he got to like to the UFC level. I mean, never mind what the, like, uh, um, team, um, Faber's gym where he was with uh, TJ, but I think this is a guy who's just eaten way too many shots over the years. Yeah. That, well, I mean, that would make sense. He, he burned it, started burning it early, and that's what are you going to do? You can only take so much punishment. All right. Speaking of punishment, Mr. Freedom himself, Josh Emmett, rung Freedom's bell. Bryce Mitchell gets stopped in one. Good night, Bible man. Yep. <laughs> A uh, little Back short, maybe. A, yeah, maybe a uh, little uh, preview for our uh, end of year picks. But this is my KO of the year. I mean, <laughs> oh, uh, it just you know, it's hard. You don't see such an insanely violent knockout like that. Where like we've seen crazy head kick knockouts, people go limp. But like Mitchell was like he was like seizing for yeah. like a minute afterwards. I mean, like. It's that before he hit the canvas, scary. his his toes were just like stiff. Like that's when you know it's bad when their whole body just is seized up in one position. And it was a uh no no setup at all. He just, you know, Emmett threw his trademark overhand right, like and Bryce just walked straight into it. And it, you couldn't have a more picture perfect knockout than that. I think there was I think yeah. that was a weekend of crazy knockouts. In the, oh yeah, the, the, box the prelims. Team. There was more. Yeah, the the UFC prelims and especially in the boxing area, there's a lot of great knockouts. Yeah, December sixteenth was a good one. Good way to close the year. Yeah, I very rarely cringe at chaos, but that was one of the ones that really I I, I almost couldn't look at it after it had happened. It that was a really brutal one. Maybe the, one of the most brutal ones we've seen all year. Yeah, I think. Uh, I think that uh, I hate to try to do this, but I always try to find silver lining in really terrible situations. This might be a good reminder yeah. for everyone. This is not a fucking game. You don't play MMA, fighting, boxing, any of that shit. This shit ain't a game. So, like, next time you want to shit on somebody for whatever reason, maybe you remember what they're putting themselves through for your entertainment. Yeah. Mm hmm. Uh, well, I don't know if I can say speaking of entertainment with Patty the uh, Batty Hamlet 
gets the UD oh. over Tony Ferguson. What a fucking garbage fucking person. <laughs> My God. Um, I was uh, trying to gear myself up to come in hot and uh, really ride the paddy train just to fuck with Chief over here. But goodness gracious, I cannot, I cannot put myself, I cannot sign off on this person for really anything. Uh, I'm going to surprise you here. Um, I was very impressed with um, some of the work Paddy did. Um, very impressed. But one thing I th we need to bear in mind just before we go into this fight, and, you know, they show the sort of tail of the tape before the, um, before the fight starts. And the thing that jumped out at me is Tony, Tony's 11 years older than Paddy. Yes. And Tony's on a seven fight skid and he's been extremely brutalized in most of them seven fights. Maybe only Diaz one did he really take that much punishment compared to the other ones. But I think the story of this is Tony look extremely weathered. And yeah. I don't know whose decision it was to bring Goggins in to put him through arguably the hardest training camp he's probably been in his life. But I can only see a world where that would accelerate that you know, the downfall of him. I I, I really don't see how and bringing a guy like that in could benefit Tony, the guy that was known for overtraining anyway. I mean, you can find countless videos with kicking metal poles on the internet as shin conditioning, in quotation marks, you know. So it just felt a bit disgusting to me. Whoever, whether Tony making that decision or not, clearly he doesn't have, either he doesn't listen to or he doesn't have good people in his corner that are checking him because that decision just... It, it, we, we we said last time it was going to be a recipe for disaster, pretty much, didn't we? Yes. And, look what happened. and Goggins, uh, more than anything, like, yes, he's like, Navy SEAL or whatever, and really awesome at marathons and Ironmans and triathlons. That has very little to do with fighting. And that has that takes very little of Tony Ferguson's physical condition into account. Absolutely pointless more did more harm than good for tony in that yeah if, i feel like if there's any area that was lacking in tony ferguson's game which there are areas now but the the thing i would say last would be his motivation like he doesn't need a guy like goggins to fire him up he's he's like perpetually fired up you know even if he hasn't been showing it in his last couple press conferences i mean this is not a guy that needs extra motivation to go and fight and get his head kicked in um, and I, it's just sad to me because it's sort of like a, you know, you can't teach it, teach an do old dog new tricks. And it's like, you can't take the overtraining out of Tony Ferguson. If anything, he's just going to overdo it even more. The, the older he gets, he doesn't know any other way than just going completely all out in his conditioning. If I just put more time in more time in, I can do it. If I just put in more time this time, I can do it. The thing is, it's even worse than that because arguably you, you could make the kit. Tony is a little bit like Colby in the sense that his greatest weapon is his cardio and it allows him to just put a relentless pace on guys. Like even even Tony, right like into the end of the third round, even when he's been beaten up badly, even in the fight against Gagey, right until the end, he's still coming forward. You, you'll never see Tony look at him and go, oh, yeah, he looks, he looks tired. He never looks tired. So why did they thought they needed to bring somebody in to help massage his gas tank it just it seems stupid to me and on on that i think if you looked at paddy even towards the end of the second round even the midway point of the second round i thought paddy was starting to gas quite a lot yeah and by the time the third round came around he was really sort of moving away and hanging on a little bit and tony was starting to catch him with shots as well i actually stopped keeping notes on that one at after in the middle of round three i stopped looking for things to try to take note of like you're not doing anything worth talking about here but the control of round two i noticed that and like that as he held control of tony who was making it as difficult as he could he did patty not able being not being able to finish this i think is pretty telling of his ceiling if that wasn't already well, clear for anyone tony knocked him down in the first as well i mean you can say <laughs> it was a flash knockdown but he still walked right into a shot from not one of the quickest strikers in the world <laughs> yeah and you, you can't be like completely gassed in the beginning of the third round 
against a guy 11 years your senior. I mean, that's just not <laughs> – you can't do that and expect to go very far in the sport. I mean uh, – If you're going to be walking into some, some shit. Here. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Let, let's give him some praise. He, he clearly looked at Tony's legs and thought, I can abuse them. And he was landing some brutal leg kicks all the way through the first and the second. He was also, he seemed to be, after the leg kicks, he seems to be quite reliant on landing one twos on, on um, Tony as well. I, I noted that Tony really had zero head movement whatsoever. Um, it, Paddy isn't a great striker, let's be honest, but he, he sort of put a bit of a striking clinic on Tony. And then when this was a grappling exchange initiated and before this fight, I'd have sort of said I'd rated Tony's jiu-jitsu game higher than Paddy's, even if Tony's on a big, you know, physical slide. Paddy just melted through him. It, like, Tony never even... There was one point in the second round, I think, where he almost he almost had um, Paddy in mission control, which is a, a position in the Eddie Bravo's 10th sort of planet jiu-jitsu system. But Paddy just sort of shrugged it off but he didn't look bothered at all. he never looked troubled at all with Paddy on the on the floor and that really sort of surprised me he ended the yeah, he's round clearly... uh, on, in mount continue sorry yeah I was just saying he's he's clearly worked on like he knows what he's good at right yeah. and he, he has worked to some extent of you know refining those skills and he he's at least got the IQ, the ring IQ to to know he that's what he needs to do right even if it's not flashy even if he's going out here and saying oh i need to make up for my last performances because they weren't entertaining at the end of the day he's gonna do what he needs to do in order to win yeah and there is something commendable about that because a lot of guys don't don't get that yeah they want the the accolades and the cheering or they're just or they're just stupid <laughs> like they just <laughs> Oh hey, I could lay kick this guy all night, and then they just don't for some reason. We, we mentioned it last week. Um, Paddy's body looked very different this time round. I don't know if you thought the same thing, Nathan. I thought he looked like quite a lot thicker. He did. He, he, he looked. He looked pretty solid. Yeah, and I know he's not. Or I think he's been making an attempt at not sort of yo-yoing on his weight, like in between fights. I don't know whether that's a side effect. Maybe he's on peds, question mark, or not. But he definitely looks noticeably different this time round. Um, I can't think what I've his seen pictures was like of in that his last older fight. fights, and yeah, he's he's got the barrel chest. I think that was what I had asked you about. Barrel body, I like. Yeah, it. yeah, that's <laughs> what like, called. Emmett's got it as well. Yeah, he he's definitely got a physique too that looks like. There is no, like, there's not really a lot of weight training uh, that's actually happening here. It looks like he's just spending all of camp getting down to weight, you know, so he's, like, looks weirdly thin. But this time around, he actually looked like he, like, looked natural for the weight. He didn't look, like, drained or yeah. he didn't look, like, odd for his size. He looked drained at the weigh-in. He looked, he looked very thin at the weigh-in, but it was clearly just water weight. But he, mm -hmm. I did, he, did, he looked very sucked in in the face. And usually that's this could sound really counterintuitive, but when they're really sucked in the face, it's usually a good sign, honestly. Right, because everything everything there is like just muscle, and the water you yeah. recoup overnight. Yeah. Mm. Anything more on uh, Patty before we move on to Mister Wonder Boy? No. Oh? All right. Well, yeah. Shavkat Rachmanov. Submits the Wonder Boy. Oh, this is, gonna, this is yeah. a tough one. Is this the yeah. end of an era? So, okay, shall we Maybe. start with the one good thing that Wonder Boy did? There was that, there was that side body kick that he landed that sort of sent Shavkat across the cage. <laughs> I just don't think there's anything else Wonder Boy did. Yeah, uh, I don't know if this is the end of an era. I mean, it feels like an older guy getting passed by a new generation for sure, but. He also didn't take a whole lot of damage here. So, I mean, we still may yet see another couple good performance out of him. But my takeaway really was just like, like, Shafgat's, like, he's stupid good. And he's like a, I mean, I, I can't believe I'm comparing Shafgat to Patty, but he knows, he, he's got a, his ring IQ is exceptionally high. Like, he did not 
for a second think, I'm going to try and strike with Wonder Boy. He's like, I can take this guy down. I can hold him there. I can submit him quick. And that's what he did. He was, you know, all business, no no frills, no flash. He's like, I'm going to go straight to the strategy that gets me my victory. And he went and just dominated him. This is the and... Kazakh wrestler guy? Yes. Yeah. But he's not, he's not just a wrestler. He has some really exceptional striking skills. And so some of the build-up to this fight was, well, are we going to see him attempt to uh, fight uh, Thompson in his own game? And there was none of that. He just was all business. I'm going to take you down. I'm going to submit you. I'm going to make this yeah. quick. And so he's like, I mean, he's sort of the boogeyman of the welterweight division. And, I mean, this kind of just cements it. Like, he's he doesn't, he doesn't fuck around. He's going to come and try and take you out any way he sees fit. There's, there's him and Hamza, right? If, if Hamza is going to campaign at 170 pounds again, I don't know whether he's gone 185 full time, but yeah, those two are definitely... If I was Leon, I'd definitely be worried about those two. Anything more on uh, Shafkat and Wonder Boy? I'm just glad Wonder Boy didn't get, like, thrashed. Like, he, he really could have been thrashed in that fight, but thankfully he just... It was a bit of a merciful end. So, yeah, I, I agree. Wonder Boy is not only like he's great to watch and he's got really unique sort of karate sort of bouncing style, but he's a really good guy at heart as well. Yeah, really they were talking about dude, that so. on the broadcast. Like he drives the school yeah. bus for needy kids or something. I don't think he's ever said a swear word in his life. <laughs> he's, he's that sort of person. <laughs> Uh, better man than me. <clears throat> yeah, fam. <laughs> uh, right, the co-main event, Alexander Pantoja, the flyweight champion, beats Brandon Royval. I don't know a whole lot about these guys, so I can't really speak on their positives or negatives. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm kind of right there with you, Mr. Casual. Um, <laughs> it was interesting because I think we talked about this when Pantoja won the belt, but he was like an Uber driver, like well, not that long ago. Yes. Um, and I don't know, somehow he got enough windfall to continue his MMA career. And now here he is as a champion. Um, you know, he looked good. Um, he had to adjust early because Roy Vall, uh, Put a lot of pressure on him but you know he adjusted and he kind of you know did what a champion has to do and adjust mid fight and once he did that he was seemed like he was in control for the end of the last few rounds but not much yeah. else to say besides that he, the first fight he put he put on just a frantic pace from the start the pantos he, he just comes out the, he comes out the traps like a ground he, he sort of does seem to slow down a little bit, or it, he, he's one of them weird fighters where he looks gassed and then, like, out of nowhere, he'll just launch like a really sort of energy filled burst and sort of go at the guy. Um, he was landing a lot of body kicks and seemed to be sort of looking to initiate the grappling exchanges from that. And I think on the ground, it wasn't really a contest. I mean, that Roy Val had like a moment also where he managed to get on top, but. For the most part, most part, it was just Pantoja raining strikes down from top position and trying to advance into submissions. He nearly got a, uh, he nearly got a choke in the end of fourth or fifth round, I think it was, but um, just to wriggle out of it. But it was, it was a pretty dominant display without anything too flashy coming from the champ. Well, there you go, getting the job done. Uh, to the main event. To the main event, Colby uh, the American Covington fails to collect his big, beautiful champion, most wonderful championship belt you've ever seen, greatest, goldest belt of all time. They said you couldn't have a belt this gold. Nobody? That's a... No, I know where you're going. Doing, no, 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 doing no, a little bit of Trump talk there. You may even get tired of winning. <laughs> no, we're going to keep on winning. You're going to be tired of gold title belts. <laughs> but he does not Man. steal it, take it back from the champ, Leon Edwards. He did nothing to the champ. I mean, he started off saying it was the main event. It was the main non-event, I'd say. Colby... 
just, do we think Pretty he was flat. injured, maybe? He, he, uh, a flat doesn't even come close. I mean, I think I saw a stat. He, he landed like 40 strikes out of like 120, I think, across the whole five rounds. I mean, if you watched the Colby fight before, he usually throws like 120 strikes per round. Yeah, right. that's, a, that's a lot. Yeah, just, Fuck. This, yeah. this was an all-time no-show uh, from oh, a contender. Yeah. Yeah. Like, this was yeah. like... And, you know, I, I can't ever say I expected to see Colby fight this kind of fight. Like, I, I never think thought that this is how he would go out. But, like, um, part of the reason I couldn't really get my vote off of Leon was that, like, you know, Colby's getting up there in age. He's been through a couple harder fights. And it's like, what is he at an older age? And uh, is this it? I mean, is this all he has left? It's like, you know, because if it is, I mean, if he, I know that there have been talks about him and Shavkat fighting. Like, he's going to get destroyed by Shavkat if he gets thrown into yeah, that next. Oh, goodness. And, and he, he was, like, calling out uh, Wonder Boy for some reason after the fight. Uh, I'm not sure he wins that either if this is the kind of performance he puts on. Like, where's <laughs> every good attribute that you think, okay, he could at least fall back on this. He didn't have his cardio. He didn't really have his chain wrestling. There's no, you know, grounded pound. There wasn't, uh, his one-two was non-existent. Like, what's, what was he trying to do here? Was he just trying to make an appearance just to see Trump? Which was would have been really sad if that was the case, because Trump left, like, mid-post-fight speech. <laughs> Trump got out of there. Yeah, well, you're, the guy that was, like, your biggest fan dips out, or doesn't show up for the fight so like why the fuck am i gonna stay for you Cause... well it, trump's brand is like i'm a winner and it's never admitted defeat and it's you know always been on top and it's like that sort of thing isn't it so colby loses he, he can't associate himself with that with because loser, that's, a, that's right. a ne negative to the brand yeah um colby, i mean they made a point of i think dana said it in the post fight press conference he said that colby looks slow and old I didn't say he looked slow and old, he just looked completely flat, he looked like he had zero cardio. And they made a point of saying, I think, for over 600 days since the last time he fought, that's that's a big gap, you know? And you can do the spar all the sparring camps that you want, but at his age, you need to be active, you need to be competing. That's probably the biggest, um, that was probably the biggest failing of his, I'd say, before this fight. It's just his own activity. He clearly, he looked like he had ring rust to me. Mm -hmm. Was he out from injury, or what? What was the reason? No, nope. no, nope, he just won a championship up. fight. Oh my god! Yeah, oh. he uh, he he did the he made weight for Leon Usman two at the start of this year. He was that the backup for that if one of them missed weight, and I think that was what sort of guaranteed him his shot next. Because I think that's a similar deal to what they've done for Bilal, because he was the standing for this fight as well. I'm right. So, Colby didn't want to go to the debates. He just wanted to show <laughs> up for the, the election. Um, That's right. Well, the day before, uh, Rudy Giuliani got hit with a really steep ruling, 150 mil. So, he might have been sad about that. Does he have that sort of money? I don't think he does, though. No, he absolutely does not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anything more on UFC 296 before we get into our picks? I think uh, for Colby, I've gone this. Oh, oh, if you have a, a fighter comment, go ahead. I'll save mine for a, late after. It, it was more, I think you, you said about who does he fight next. He was calling that Wonderboy and maybe Shavkat. Surely the only fight left for him that sells is the Poirier fight because those two have got beef. They used to train together. They both hate each other. It sells a fuck ton of pay-per-views. Surely that's the only fight that those two, that he's got left, Colby. That would be the good money fight to do. Um, do you think it would happen at a catch weight, or do you think he'd pull Poirier all the way up to welter? You say pull Poirier all the way up to welterweight, but Poirier is a. Uh, I mean, how he ever made forty-five, I'll never know. And I, th I think he said that he weighs even when he weighs in for uh, lightweight, he's like one hundred and eighty pounds. Good, in, yeah, he's on, a big on boy. Day in the cage, he's a, he's he a big he's a big lightweight. Yeah, he can make welterweight, no problem. 
Oh that's probably goodness. not a bad time to do it because he's like way back on the queue for title shots to Islam. Because at least Gaethje and Oliveira are both ahead of him. And then after yeah. that, Islam's making these statements like, well, I don't want to fight. I, I'm not interested in rematches. I'm interested in new guys. So, you know, he may get iced out there. Well, unless, the only other thing that you said Poirier might possibly have is the Connor Far fight. But who... Who no shot. Do you see what's going on there? Like, you know, Connor's coming out and saying he wants to be on UFC 300, but UFC are saying he's not on it. So, I don't know. For mm. Edwards, is uh, Bilal Muhammad next up? I think I think Bilal is his next fight. Yeah. They can't avoid giving Bilal a title shot any longer. So is it going to be the ultimate fucking snooze fest yeah well they fought last time and it got um it got stopped because did leon poke him in the eye i think is that what happened eye poke yeah something like that yeah 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 <sighs> leon was winning there if i remember rightly but um it's funny you mentioned about what's next for leon because islam has said that maybe he wants to go up and fight a well away as well uh, which will be interesting <laughs> That would be pretty interesting, but I hope that doesn't happen until he gets a couple more fights in at, at lightweight. Yeah. Particularly yeah, the second Charles fight. Oh, Islam moving up. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I'm oh. pretty I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he, he has he has made statements like that, but man, I wanna see him versus I, I wanna see him fight Olver again. I'd love to see him fight Gaethje, and then I wanna see him fight Armin Saryukian. I mean those are oh, three yes. excellent fights. Absolutely, like, sorry, yeah. Uh, well, uh, I guess before we move on, um, do we want to talk about, uh, or do we want to save this for a post pick discussion? Kind of the, uh, the the trash talk that surrounded this event. Uh, oh yeah. yeah, let's do it right now. I want to hear about that. <laughs> I didn't pay attention to it, so I didn't see. So. Um, what essentially happened yeah, you, you... was, I'll, I'll set the stage for the the stuff that happened in the, the press conference, and we'll go from there. So Colby's doing his usual trash talk, and he says something like, I'm going to take you to the seventh layer of hell, and while we're there, we can say hi to your dad. And if you don't know, Leon's dad was killed when he was 13. Holy and like some... shit. <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> Uh, maybe one of the wildest things that occurred what? at an actual press conference. Yeah. And you know, I mean, Leon immediately like threw his water bottle at him and stood up and got in his face and stuff, and they had to be separated. Understandable. Um, Completely understandable. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the next day, they or maybe it was the same day, they had a uh, the press conference for like the next three UFC fights. And Sean Strickland and... Uh, uh, Drykus Duplessis were, were on the stage and they were talking and Drykus after Sean went on this speech about how you know he was abused and he doesn't want other people to like be abused he made a statement something along or something to the effect of like oh like at least my dad didn't molest me or something like that and you know so wow. just you know all around classy yeah. talk holy and, shit uh, and then you know during the actual main card you had Strickland and Duplessis putting on a better main event than the actual <laughs> that main I event. I didn't see. <laughs> like a that was amazing. Strickland asked the lady in between them to move aside. Yeah, he asked Gilbert's yeah. wife and kid, okay, could you scoot out of the way, ma'am? What a guy. He jumped in. <laughs> Excuse me, miss. Please get you and your son out of the way while I kick this other guy's head in. <laughs> <laughs> I would not want for you and your child here to be hurt. My ire is directed at one person. What? Yeah, wow, so... man, that's fucking classy stuff. I've I've heard some, some wild shit in boxing press conferences, but holy shit, nothing. I don't think I've ever heard anything like that. Yeah. It was, oh no, uh... there's been there's been stuff said like that in boxing presses before. Oh, I, I, at least stuff I didn't quit to that anyway. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, me personally. They're about to fight each other, 
does it really matter what words are said in the grand scheme? I, think, I mean, it does, but I'm kind of there. Like, not that I condone saying things like that, but in that sort of environment where this other guy is going to try and take years off your life with the damage he's going to do to you, if you try and get in his head and put him off, even if you have to say some pretty deranged, fucked up shit, is it really that bad? I don't know if, like, it's bad in terms... Of, it's certainly not bad in terms of business, right? Because, like, the UFC is going to put that in, in promotions and stuff like that. I think the thing for me is, like, maybe this is, like, old school... I don't know. Or maybe just, like, a... I don't know. My good side trying to come out. Like, I kind of want to like all the people that I'm watching. And it's, like, you. there's a bit of, like, nobility, I guess, lost when you start saying stuff like that. Like maybe there's lines that shouldn't be crossed um but part of the issue too is that the ufc doesn't seem to know where to draw the line in the sand with stuff like this because the they'll have they'll kind of almost condone or even you know support encourage stuff stuff that's being said like that and then you'll have the bus incident or they'll go and they'll set up drykus and sean like two rows apart and it's like of course sean is going to try and jump Drykus, because in the real world, if you said that to someone and you saw them the next day, yeah. you'd probably swing at them, you know. And so that's where my kind of that you know, the seating arrangement is. was fucking arranged. That was Dana on purpose. Said, Dana said it was his fault. Dana said he's the guy who did the seating. He said it in the post press conference. He said it was him who did it. So yeah, which I just find wild. I mean, I, I, I can't just picture Dana sat there doing the seating arrangements for UFC events, but apparently that's what he spends his time doing. Well, he got he got what he wanted, if that's the case. I, I'm I, glad he, you mentioned nobility, Nathan, because I, I've seen a lot. Like you see this quite often when there's other UFC fighters that don't like the trash talk thing, and they always bring up the fact that martial arts is about respect and stuff like that. And I think we saw a few of them sentiments brought. I can't remember who it was, but somebody was... It might have been Shavka, actually. It was, somebody was bringing up and saying how much they dislike it and that sort of MMA is turning into something that... It's back, the complete backyard opposite of what they got into. Ma- yeah, it's sort of turning completely away what like the cultural sort of um, f- texture is to martial arts, where it's you know, about respect and you know, self-reflection and stuff like that. And, me personally, I'm here for it, sauce paper, and it's exciting. And when the guys actually do truly hate each other, it makes it more exciting. And, you know, I, I do agree with that. It is fun when you see real animosity between guys. Um, but, you know, like you said, there is that cultural context to martial arts where it's it's all about, like, discipline and self-control. Yeah. And there's, like, a... Even if you... As much as you might dislike someone, there is a, there's some mutual respect. Like, even with, like... You know, I know Colby's, like he's made it a point to be the villain in his whole career. But even like after the, after the Usman fights, I mean, you saw how respectful he was in defeat, you know, that's even something that even Colby's shown before. So, you know, and maybe I shouldn't be surprised that Colby would go and say something like he did to Leon, but it it is kind of weird hearing him go even, even lower than he normally does. I think, um, in the, Post-fight interview for uh, Bam Rodriguez and Sonny Edwards, the little the boxing fight that was on, kind yeah. of at the same time, that they they both said like they were asked about that like what uh what do we do what what are you gonna what's the deal with you know the stuff that you guys were saying to each other that that uh, Sonny was saying to you I'm like man like it's like we just talked a second ago like we both know that's about putting on the show so. I think um, it would it if it appears to be real, but they kind of act like they're really upset about stuff. I That's don't know, getting into professional field. wrestling. There, there's a different. You can tell when it's real and when it's not. Like yeah. the Conor Khabib stuff, there was never for a moment I didn't believe that Khabib absolutely hated everything Conor stood for, everything he said. And his whole outlook and aspect on life, and uh, the exact same for Connor towards Khabib as well. And there's there's never any chance of reconciliation between them two, ever. I, yeah, and I just see, it. I, I know what you mean. 
And just when you see that outpouring of emotion in the ring, like when it was like the end of the third round of the Khabib Connor fight, and Connor said like it's just business, mate, and like that made Khabib so furious. Like there was no acting. Yeah. Like the man, like he had really blown his top there, and was that's, mean, losing it. That's something that um, I was actually going to mention when you said when Chief when he said it's like trying to get under somebody's skin, uh, which yeah. yeah, definitely like uh, I. I definitely have some first-hand experience with the type of stuff that Sean Strickland talks about. So, for like it, earlier in my life when I wasn't at the same kind of level of acceptance that like Sean is at, that would definitely have messed me up to the point where I would probably be distracted and lose. But if that were to happen to me now today, as I am, like that wouldn't it wouldn't bother me in the sense that like it's going to change my my mindset it would invigorate me to where i i'm not this isn't a sport of respect anymore i genuinely want to hurt you which well, played it perfectly leon because uh, maybe this is this is easy to say after that because we know how colby's performance turned out but was Colby ready to go to an even lower level than usual because he knew he was going to be a bit flat in the cage? And he thought the only way he could maybe win was to get Leon emotionally invested, which Leon didn't do at all. He approached it like it was a task. You know, there was no emotion there. He went in there and he executed a game plan flawlessly. And I think the way I feel about this is, I think, like you just, like you just said, Leo, I think, if you allow other people's words like that to be able to control you emotionally, you kind of within their grasp. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think it's definitely something I've learned with age, especially when I was a bit younger. Um, I've never experienced anything like Sean, but, you know, everybody sort of goes through getting picked on or bullied or, you know, that sort of thing growing up. It kind of happens. And there's a, you can't even say this phrase anymore because it just sort of gets propelled into sort of outrage culture. But there's a phrase we have on the internet, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. And I honestly feel that's how you kind of have to be in the fight game. You know, this guy's about to go and try really physically hurt you. There's some words, there's some noises he's going to make of his mouth really, gonna, you know, let bother you that much. Yeah, uh, that's something that has helped me a lot with other, just in life in general, is the, the mentality of like what people say and do to me, is a reflection of their character, not mine. So yeah, that's emotional maturity. You know? So if you want to, do you want to make fun of me for having a really horrible childhood? Go ahead, because that just you are the one that sounds like a piece of shit, and absolutely yeah. no one's going to be on your side. And and yeah, that, that oftentimes that mentality is the difference between victory and defeat, because there are a lot of guys where they let it get to their heads. And then they don't fight like they should, and that's that's the difference. But yep. here, you know, we have an example where Leon is as heated as he got at the press conference. I mean, he was he totally was cool, measured collected. and disciplined, and, and like everything you'd want out of a champion, you know. And yeah, he went out and did the job. Yeah, that. Uh, but I think like fight sports, just like with my personal experience in the military, it those types of uh, like macho sort of things, things that are perceived to be very manly and strong attracts kids that had difficult lives. So there's always going to be that kind of fuel for someone else to throw at you. Unfortunate, but that's just what I've seen mm -hmm. and experienced in my life. Not only do we know MMA, guys, we also do emotional healing as well. <laughs> yeah, that's actually what the uh, the Hard Shell Tacos show that I do with my cousin. That's it's about a lot of that stuff. That's exactly what it's about. Uh, yep. Uh, do we want to? I don't know. Do we want to bear our souls anymore, or <laughs> do we want to get to the picks? Let's move it along to the picks. Let's right. get back on the happy times. Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> maybe not happy for you, but happy for Chief. Point totals at the end of the year. Um, I think I did not count two cards here. So right now, 
As of right now, it's 47.53 before I count. I think, uh, didn't we work out last time, there was no way he could win anyway, even like he got everything right and I got everything wrong. Yeah, because you both picked the same on the Fight Night card. Yeah, you yeah I think I gained like maybe a point or two. Two points. Uh, wait, minus, you gained one point because of, of the uh, shot, the Wonder Boy Thompson one. Oh, gotcha, yeah. So, there you go. Chief takes it. I'm going to get that trophy spun up. And I'll find some sort of a... I don't know if I could get a piece of shit sort of bronze or molded <laughs> as a trophy. Piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. You can actually ship him, like, cow shit to his front doorstep. Yeah, that... Uh, Congratulations, here's your prize. Here's your prize, you fucking... got. No, <laughs> I'm not gonna send. <laughs> I'm not gonna send you dookies. At least send me some shit that isn't native to the UK. I mean, I can go in a million fields and find cow shit. Like I was gonna go with like gorilla or something, mountain lion shit or something like that. <laughs> no, the piece of shit trophy, definitely not yours. Um, I I have something lined up, but I had something in mind for both of you, depending on who would win. So we'll we'll see. Is how it that Dana White out. trophy. <laughs> the Dana White Award for Best MMA yeah. Picks. Just his just big red his bold head. shiny head. <laughs> oh my God. I might do that actually. <laughs> uh, all right, before we do our picks, there's a a Muay Thai card on the 22nd, so that's fun. All right, end of the year picks. I do have a running order for. Like for who's going to the order for us to say them, but I so for fight of the year, I'm starting on this one. This one's uh myself, Nathan, and Chief, and then so the my fight of the year pick, I just said fuck it, Islam Volkanovsky. Uh, Good. Really easy. The first, the first fight. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I think that's a consensus for us. I mean, there was still, I don't think, a fight this year that had the same kind of stakes or the same kind of star power that delivered to that level. Yeah. I went with, uh, originally I went with um, Usman Hamza. I thought that was another great fight. But yeah, like you said, stakes weren't nearly as heavy in that as uh, Islam Vol. All right. Well, that was easy. So fighter of the year, I have it, Chief, Nathan, then myself. Ooh, sorry. Fighter of the year. Yes. This is a relatively easy one. Uh, Leon Edwards, I'm going to say. Um, he's managed to beat Usman again. And he's managed to beat Colby, albeit a shit Colby in that time. But I think he's been impressed. He's managed to out-wrestle Usman in March in the rematch and out-strike him. And then he was able to put an absolute clinic on Colby last weekend. So, yeah, I've gone with Edwards. Uh my fighter of the year is Alex Pereira conquering his second division, um, going through Jan Blahovich and Yuri Prohaska, two of his, at least from his specific style, two of his hardest matchups in that division. You know, Jan being a heavy, very kick-centric fighter, and then Yuri obviously being this very unorthodox, you know, throw the whole kitchen sink at you kind of samurai style guy. <laughs> that um, hair was wild. That stare off was wild too. I'm still not over how yeah. how epic that stare off was. So, Alex Pereira, light heavyweight champ, is my fighter of the year. Ooh, I had that as uh, that was my second pick. It because he took the L from Israel Adesanya and then went on to dominate in his next two. But I went with Tom Aspinall. Comes back from a major mm. knee injury to get KO one in both of his fights. Versus Tabura and Pavlovich for the interim heavyweight title. That's a really good pick. Yeah. Uh, the new challenger of the year, this one's Nathan, myself, and Chief. So my upset, or I'm not an upset, I'm reading my script. My new challenger of the year is uh, Bo Nickel. Bo there wasn't Nickel. a whole lot from him this year, but just the kind of hype that's and talent that's around him. Um just it's, it's hard to deny and this was a year that seemed a little down in terms of like exciting new guys coming up so i just felt like i had to give it to Bo. all right uh i kept my 
one from earlier in the year, from the mid-year, and it's uh, Diego Lopez, for a little reminder. Came in on less than a week's notice. Uh, he lost to Mosfar Evloev at uh, on UFC 288. That was Sterling Cejudo, but... He came in and he came in on less than a week's notice and gave Evlo of a hell of a fight. Comes back to submit Gavin Tucker and won on a fight night card. And then murders Pat Sabatini in 90 seconds on UFC 295. Yep, mine is um, Alice Garoff. Extremely impressed with the way he's come in and dominated the new guys with his Sunday stuff. He's going to be very close challenges for the belt and middleweight in the very near future. Upset of the year. This one's. <clears throat> I'll start this one, then Chief, and then Nathan. Uh, my, I picked a little bit of an un, unorthodox one to start, but I do have an actual fight pick. But the the unorthodox one is Korean Zombie walking away from the sport after getting taking a hard defeat uh, from Max Holloway. So is that, that an up, upset in the year as in we're all very upset about it? Yes, that's, ex- that's exactly what it is. <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> uh, but the, the, for a, an actual fight, just one that I thought was really funny was uh, it was a women's fight, Holly Holm uh, getting her ass kicked by uh, Buena Silva. On a, like a, it was like a nothing card. It's supposed to be, this was actually one of, one of the few Dojo Dunce caps that we handed out where it referred to Buena Silva is a dumb fucking bitch. You lost. You did not understand the assignment. You're supposed to just go in and get your ass kicked for Holly Holm to pass the time. Um, my upset the year. This is going to be a weird one. Uh, Izzy versus Pereira. I did not expect um, Izzy to overturn his win against Pereira at the start of the year. Uh, I was extremely surprised when that happened, actually. Yeah, that one was pretty that was surprising. I think in our preview, we hardly said anything about Izzy. We just kind of wrote off him as, oh, yeah, he's he's probably at the end of his road here. He's going to get knocked out again. And then he won. Uh, my upset of the year is Strickland versus Israel Adesanya. Ooh. And I, I know that there have been larger, like, odds losses. Like, Nunez lost before. Holly Holm had huge numbers. Shevchenko uh, losing to Grasso. But, like... Like just the the visual image of seeing Sean Strickland put Adesanya on the canvas and go on to just dominate him ba- basically for five rounds with that Philly and shell, hoist. baby. <laughs> I mean, like you talk about like I like I did did not have that on my bingo card. I'll just say that definitely like, not. It, it's just one of the wildest images we've ever seen in this sport. So it has to be that for me. Okay, stoppage of the year. You can have one four KO and so and submission if you want. Up to you. But uh, chief myself then Nathan. Um, I had to go back and watch this one to remember just how epic it was. But Gage's head kick on Poirier was my oh, of the my year. Goodness. That was phenomenal. That was a good yeah, one. Brutal. Yeah, um, so my submission of the year went to Grasso submitting, Chev- submitting Shevchenko, which I did not see coming in a million months of Sundays. Shit, I forgot that one. Yeah, that was my submission pick uh, at the mid-year. So, yeah, I'll carry that one over. I completely forgot about it. But my KO, I picked... I What I expected to be everyone's pick was uh, Saryukin knocking out Dariush, just recency bias, but I'm going with Aljamain Sterling getting pieced up by Sean O'Malley. That was fun. Oh, it was a good one. Yeah. Uh, so I've got a KO and a submission. The submission is easy. It's Grasso and Shevchenko. That was just an insane submission. And then, as aforementioned, my knockout of the year is Emmett versus Mitchell. Maybe recency bias, but like, it's just a simply... It's a very simple knockout, a very brutal knockout, and I mean, Spooky. as Chief said, very hard to watch. Yep. All right, for comeback of the year, Nathan Chief, and I'll go last. Uh, my comeback of the year is Edson Barbosa versus. Oh, uh, God damn it! I can't remember his first yep. name. Sadiq Yusuf. Sadiq Yusuf. Yeah. Um, 
uh, to get battered that badly the yeah. first two rounds, and then the turnaround is his like signature like wheel kick. I mean, you can't you can't write the script better. <laughs> like script writers need to raise for that one. Yeah, so, definitely. Um, that's easy one for me. I had the same one. <laughs> that was <Yeah>. too good. <laughs> All right, villain of the year, I'll start, then Nathan, and then Chief finishing off. I had two out of this one. Obviously, I picked this, or oh. I made this category. What was real, that? Real quick, can we can we also include Dunce Cap of the year? Is that also a villain thing, or is that a, should that be a separate uh, category? Why not both? Okay. Um, if that's the case, then I can also give a Dunce Cap. <laughs> So the refer- I this villain thing I picked out because of referee Kerry Hatley letting Bobby Green <laughs> get beat 10 years early into the fucking care home by Jalen Turner. Absolutely abhorrent stuffage or lack of. Yeah. That was the so for the dunce cap, I guess, would be the doctor in uh, UFC 294 that asked Johnny Walker to stand up, do a handstand, spell his own name backwards, and then say the population count <laughs> of Abu Dhabi in order to continue up. Completely ridiculous. And then, but allowed a dude to get his balls fucking exploded. Unbelievable. There you go. Um, oh, is it me next or nothing? Uh, Nathan on this one. Oh, <laughs> mine. Sorry. Yeah, so that uh, Kerry Hatley was on my list as well. Uh, he gets the Dunn's cap of the year for a- attempted murder in the ring. Um, my villain of the year is Colby Covington, uh, just for his little... Pre- for he, He's a twofold villain. One, his comments he made at the press conference, but two, for also stealing my $75 and delivering the worst main event performance of oh. potentially the year. <laughs> you should... Uh try to file a lawsuit just for the giggles of it. I should. I really yeah. should. People try to do that with Manny Pacquiao against uh, Floyd Mayweather. Mm. I, I could be like the the guys from Florida State that are suing the college football playoff for not letting <laughs> them in. <laughs> What's, um, we'll, we'll talk about it in a second, but I, I don't understand the whole situation. But Sure, yeah, we'll explain it after. Yeah. Chief, your villain, Dunstan. Um, one or both? I'm going to go with Paddy Pitt. For yeah, I can one. Just a scouter. And the fact that he acted like he won that last fight before his current one, which he most definitely did not, and then getting mad at everyone when they told him that he didn't win. So, oh, yeah, he's mine. Uh, and for Hero, uh, Chief Nathan, then myself. Oh, this one, this is going to be another controversial one. Um, Sean Strickland for me. He's, I don't think he's the hero we deserve, but he's the one we need right now. <laughs> <laughs> he's a bit chaotic, but he, um, I think he's, I think he's good. I think he's good in his heart. I think he just has a lot of idiotic takes, or shall we say, insensitivities about a lot of things. He's an anti-hero. Yeah, he's that. Yeah. He's Batman. So. My hero of the year is the other Sean, Sean O'Malley, for saving us from the, the boring reign of <laughs> Aljamain Sterling. <laughs> um, UFC is better when we have exciting yes, champions, so definitely. I'm all for it. Uh, I picked uh, Volkanovski for stepping in on 11 days notice to save UFC 294 just to get murked in round one. Man, thank you for a sacrifice. Yeah, thank you for your service, Volkanovski. It's a wonderful yeah. thing you did for us. Man, that's all I got for categories. Is there any? There's no news really, though, right? Because there's no fights for like a month. Well, Michael Van Page is confirmed. Yeah, two nine nine. That's pretty big news that they found him. All right, that's good. If, if he, I really do hope he's got a better, uh, or at least more more gas in the tank than Askren did when he got signed by the UFC. Because this just genuinely is one of the guys that, uh, you know, one of the the non UFC organization headliners that absolutely is one of the best in the world. 
And I hope we get to see that on a UFC main card. Wait, who is this getting picked up? Michael Venom Page. He was in mm. Bellator for a really oh, long time. Okay. He was on the receiving end of a really terrible knockout, but um, he uh, oh. he's had so many knockouts of his own that are just, I mean, he really is one of the best strikers on the planet when he's at his A, a game. So he didn't go to PFL with the rest of Bellator? Or... Well, he's been a free agent, right, Chief, for a little bit? Yeah, I mean, there was rumors that the PFL had signed him, I think, a couple of, not even a week or so before Dana announced it at the press up. Wow. Uh, yeah, I think it was thought that the UFC had missed out on him, but then Dana just sort of dropped the bombshell, like, with, like, no fanfare at all. He just started announcing the fight for UFC 299, I think it was. Oh, by the way. And he was just, yeah, yeah, that's literally what he said. He went, oh, by the way, Michael Lennon Page versus X. Wow. Kevin Holland. Yeah, he's getting Kevin Holland. That's it. Kevin Holland's like tailor made to show off his skills. So, uh, good night, sweet prince. Yeah, I was about to say, rest in peace, man. Hopefully, uh, what's that fucking asshole's name? Kerry Hatley. I hope he's not your referee. Oh <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't think we have anything else. Well then, let's get this shit wrapped up with a pretty Christmas bow. Oh. Okay, um, mentioned Hard Shell Tacos about other not fight stuff, uh, but the boxing one, besides boxing, if you want to check out either of these, go to lvxmedia.net. <clears throat> there, if you go there, you hit the ultimate fucking casual thing, the button, there's a phone number that you can call or text. It goes straight to voicemail. It's anonymous. I don't know who you are unless you tell me. So that's fun. Uh, I put that on the, the... I don't know if I should be putting that on the political show. It seems like it's asking for trouble. Uh, but uh, social media stuff, LVX Media Net for everything. If you can't find it, we're not on it. Um, there is... We're st we still need some merch designs. Haven't had time to sit down and do it. But yeah, uh, I think all throughout the week we had every show release an episode. So a lot of other stuff to check out. But I think that's going to do it for us for the rest of the year. But, uh, Johnny Walker uh, is having his... Uh, he's getting the rematch on the 6th. I think that's the first fight of the year. That's January, what, 13th? 6th, from what I Sixth. saw. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, right, that's going to do it. Parting words, gentlemen, last words of the year. Uh, have a Merry Christmas, everyone, and a full passion cure. <laughs> yeah, Merry Christmas, fellas. All right. Thank you all for listening. We will see you when uh, it's time to sit on Johnny Walker. Is that? Do you pause on that? I think pause on that. Probably should pause. <laughs> All right, we'll catch you then. Bye.